This video has been funded in part by the Guild via Patreon. Check out the links in the description or at the end of this video for more details. Hello everybody, my name is Chris Kildard and welcome back to another Musou Mei Pros vs Cons review. I don't know what it is about these Warrior spin-offs that involve other companies' IPs, but Koei Tecmo seems to always pick the franchises that I have no pre-existing knowledge of. The only ones I had any pre-existing knowledge of were Gundam because of Gundam Wing, Hyrule Warriors because I played Ocarina of Time and Wind Waker before it was released, and Dragon Quest Heroes because of 8 on the PS2 back in the day. Other than that, I only read a few chapters of One Piece and Shonen Jump and played Fire Emblem Heroes before we got a Warriors release. So I wouldn't say I had much knowledge of those. The ones I had absolutely no idea about were Arslan, Fist of the North Star, Persona, and the star of today's video, Berserk. The Berserk manga first started in 1989 and is written by Kentaro Miura. The manga is still going to this day and is notorious for such large breaks between releases. Considering it's been around only a year longer than me and has had 40 volumes released, this reminds me of a few other pieces of media that took ages to finally be put out. Chinese Democracy, Duke Nukem Forever, Final Fantasy XV, and the Deadpool movie. The 40th volume was released in 2018. It's been nearly three years since we've got a new volume. I'm curious which will happen, the end of Berserk or the release of Half-Life 3. I remember seeing the manga in bookstores before the game came out, but I never really looked into it. I at least knew it existed, but that was about it. When Berserk and the Band of the Hawk got announced, I got excited both to get a new Warriors game and potentially a new anime to watch. So far, I've wanted to watch every single anime that has had a Warriors game. As of writing this script, I have watched the original Gundam, Iron-Blooded Orphans, and I'm starting Seed. I've also started One Piece, watched the modern Berserk movies, and I'll be starting Attack on Titan soon. I know, as someone who hasn't watched the full first season of Attack on Titan, I would be bullied in school for that. So how is Berserk as a Warriors game? Well, before we get into that, don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe for more, and of course, leave a comment with your thoughts. All of these interactions help this channel get pushed to others in recommendations. Now, without further ado, let's find out if this game is worth it with the first pro. All right, time to blab about my favorite thing to start reviews off with, the f***ing graphics. This game looks great, and I don't even have a PS4 Pro or a PS5 to make it look even better. This is the base PS4 gameplay. I do wish I had a PS4 Pro or a PS5 to really get the most out of this game, but I think I can enjoy it without the additional horsepower. Everything looks great. When you use Guts' Muso attack and he screams while slashing through the enemy forces, the expression on his face is so spectacularly animated. Every wrinkle he has going from his usual scowl to the gruesome blood-curdling battle cry is so well done. Like, real talk. The Berserk 2016 anime started airing in July, and this game came out in October. How in the hell does this look a million times better than the anime? I'm so glad this game didn't try too hard to emulate the art style of the Golden Age movies or the 2016 anime. When you play this game, it feels like its own entity, separate from any other adaptation. The more realistic art style blends itself well into the Warriors gameplay. It reminds me of a darker version of Dynasty Warriors 4. I would definitely pay for a Koei Tecmo produced Berserk series. Just start from the beginning. I know we've seen the Golden Age done multiple times, but I'm willing to watch a full 3D series if it's done by Koei Tecmo and in this art style. Especially if they take what they've done with their games lately and put a little bit of that Koei Tecmo flair into the designs. I imagine it'd go over much better than uh, what we got with 2016. Like. How can you compare the two? Even the background environments of this game look better than the main characters of the anime. How do you f*** up your main characters so bad that the video game based on you has trees that look better? Con! The first con is probably going to be the biggest issue I have with this game. The roster. Berserk has a massive world with so many characters. The lore is engrossing and there is so much that can be drawn on to create the character roster for Berserk and the Band of the Hawk. Do you know how many characters there are? This is literally the lowest character count of any Warriors game. Dynasty Warriors 2, arguably the first Musou game ever, had 28 characters. The first Samurai Warriors had 15. Arslan had 12. The first Pirate Warriors game had 9. The only game to have this few characters is the first Ken's Rage game. Both Ken's Rage and Berserk have only 8 characters playable characters. That's probably why you're only seeing a few characters in my gameplay, because literally 
That's all I can do. There isn't even DLC characters. There are so many characters we could have seen as playable to add a little bit more to the gameplay and replayability. Pippin, Corcus, and Rickard are all missing from the Band of the Hawk. I mean, they're there, but they're not playable. I would be okay with not getting any more playable characters from the Golden Age other than the Band of the Hawk, but if we wanted to have more, we could have seen Bazuso, Bascon, and Adon be playable. When we get to everything post-Eclipse, that's where we see a lot of characters that could have been made playable easily. Skull Knight probably being the biggest disappointment. Considering how often you see him in the game, he should just be a playable character. Same with Isidro. He follows you for a large part of the story and isn't playable. He could have been made into a fast-paced attacker, similar to Judo and Griffith. Fernice is another missed opportunity. We see her a lot in this game besides Serpico. There's even a trophy to rescue Fernice while playing as Serpico. It would be a whole lot better if she were playable too. Then you get to the Apostles. Mozgus and Grumbel come to mind as key characters you fight against in the story that obviously have movesets that are unique. Why wouldn't you try to have them as playable? Sure, you might need some tweaking to add some attacks to make them fully playable, but considering how much work it would have taken to make these characters playable and they didn't do that, very, very disappointing. Pro. One of the most important aspects of a Warriors title is its gameplay. The ones that I didn't enjoy as much were the ones that were boring or too repetitive. Berserk and the Band of the Hawk definitely feels like a solid Warriors game. You have your basic controls, just like any other game. Square is your regular attack, triangle is your strong attack, X is dodge, circle is muso, L1 guards, L2 calls your horse, R2 toggles the map, and R1 uses an item. If you're fairly familiar with the mainline Dynasty Warriors games, you'll feel right at home moving over to Berserk and the Band of the Hawk. The items you use while pressing R1 vary depending on the character and what items you have equipped. There are two sets of items, your limited items that are mostly used for healing and stat boosting, and your sub weapons. The limited items you'll find playing through the main game, again, these will heal you, increase your attack, defense, speed, etc., and even make defeated enemies have a chance at dropping gold for a certain amount of time. You can pick and choose four items to take into a stage. Your sub weapons are specific to that character. A lot of them have a sort of ranged weapon, like a crossbow or throwing knives. Some of them even have special animations that make them look like a Muso attack. Guts's arm cannon is one that comes to mind. It's really fun to be fighting and using your usual combos then throw one of your sub weapon attacks out there. One thing that I absolutely love about this gameplay is how weighty it is. Guts's sword is gigantic and they translated it so well by making his moves super slow but oh so destructive. Though the sound effects of the sword sound like synthesized pots and pans, they actually help with the atmosphere. The dark tones of the story and the bleak visuals of war carry over into the sound design and gameplay. It may not be the first Warriors game with blood in it, but this game does it so well. It never feels like it has blood for the sake of just being edgy. It has blood because this is war. This is an invasion of demons. This is what death is truly looks like. And with the weighty feel and the classic controls of the gameplay, it feels like that classic Warriors fun. I compared it to Dynasty Warriors 4 before, but I really meant it. When I was first playing this game, I felt like I was being reintroduced to the Musou franchise. I instantly felt nostalgic, even though I had no recollection of Berserk, and the visuals of the combat are a dark and bloody variation of the more modern Warriors games. It's almost like it's a great mix of what we love about both classic and modern Musou titles. Con! This next con is something that I absolutely can't understand. Like I said, Berserk and the Band of the Hawk was released in October 2016. The horrendous anime series was released in July of 2016. We didn't get a dub of that until much later, but we already had a dub cast that was used in a pre-existing Berserk property, the movies. The Golden Age movies were dubbed in 2013, which gave us a cast of great voices. I actually recommend watching the dub. This world has a very European feel to it. Hearing the voices in English just makes sense to my brain. But for some reason, they decided not to dub it. Like, at this point, Koei Tecmo should have some connections to English dubbing studios. Sentai Filmworks published both the anime for La Corda Doro and Atelier Esca and Logic. Neither were dubbed, but we know that Sentai does that. They have also worked with many IPs that have been dubbed through Funimation, One Piece, Arslan, even Attack on Titan, and Fairy Tale. None of which, for some reason, received a dub from that studio. It doesn't make sense to me. 
Funimation has the movies on their streaming service, or at least they have the second and third, so why wouldn't you use that dub cast? A good chunk of the lines you could probably take from the anime rather than having them writing and re-recording new ones. Lines cost money, so it can save money as well as time to just take them from the movies instead. This would also be great considering they use a lot of the scenes from the movies in the game, so you could just take the dub instead and put it into the audio. I still think it would be good to have that option for Japanese voices in case someone just doesn't like the dub, but I think the amount of people that would use the dub is greater than the amount of people who wouldn't. Like I'm literally watching the movies right now while I'm writing this script and I keep getting distracted because the scenes are so well acted. There are so many people like me who complain about being lost in the action when they're trying to pay attention to the story. I'm sorry, but I can't read and kill at the same time. Yes, I have ADHD. Yes, that makes it easier for me to multitask. No, it doesn't mean my brain will register and retain the information it reads while I'm trying to wipe out several hordes of enemies in one swing. Pro. There are a lot of little things that I enjoy about this game that I need to mention. Like always, this is my time to go about a bunch of things that I just have to compliment. These are mostly little things that won't take up a whole pro section, but need to be mentioned nonetheless. Like how the story follows the movies and manga beat for beat. If you find the 3D animation of the movies too off-putting, then playing this game would be my solution for you. If you're a fan of the Berserk series and you want something that's really good to play and go over the story of Berserk, then you need to get this game. Spoiler alert, if you want to experience the story, I would recommend skipping ahead. This game starts in the Golden Age, just like the movies. Guts is a mercenary who gets hired by Griffith and the Band of the Hawks after losing a one-on-one -on -one fight. There's no mention of demons, magic, or anything else. You eventually fight Zod and start wondering if there's something that you're missing in this world. Like, this is the event that makes you think, maybe I don't actually know what's going on. As you continue and learn more about every character's aspirations, Guts finds Griffith talking to the Princess Charlotte when he says he only considers someone a friend if they are truly his equal. Someone who follows him will never be his friend. This leads Guts to leave the Band of the Hawk after winning a one-on-one -on -one battle with Griffith. This is the key point that starts down the path of everything going to sh**. Griffith goes mad from essentially losing for the first time in his life and losing something he genuinely wanted. He goes and bangs Princess Charlotte, gets found and arrested. He is then tortured by the king. We have a time skip of one year and Guts finds the Band of the Hawk again. Finding out what happened to Griffith and learning his location, Guts agrees to rejoin the Band of the Hawk and save him. When they find Griffith, he is starved. He no longer has any muscle or strength to speak of. They cut out his tongue and severed every tendon in his hands and legs. He will never walk or swing a sword again, let alone command an army. Corrupted by all of this, finding his behelet, the Egg of Kings, he begins the events of the sacrifice during the eclipse. Guts and Casca are the only ones that find their way out of it. Casca is broken by being raped by the new powerful Griffith. Both Guts and Casca are branded. The brand bleeds and burns at night, luring demons to their whereabouts. Guts is looking for a cure for Casca, and that leads him to fighting nearly every demon in existence. And that's pretty much the story. You know, really feel good things. It starts you with the story of friendship and then rips every little good feeling away and leaves you a broken shell of your former self. I love Berserk. One thing that Berserk really does well is replayability. Somehow, it does a really good job of giving the player a lot to do with only eight characters. First of all, there are the Behalots. A good chunk of the story stages have Behalots that can be collected by completing in-game tasks, like taking out a specific officer within a certain period of time. Some stages only have one Behalot, while others have up to three. It's very likely that you'll have to replay some of these stages in order to get them all. When you've collected enough, you'll get a scene from the anime, manga, or movies that you can see in 3D. It's nothing special, honestly, but it is something to work towards. The biggest post-game work you'll be doing is in the Endless Eclipse mode. In this, you must climb the Endless Tower, completing various requests as you go along. You'll have the opportunity to choose which requests you take every five floors. On the 10th, 20th, 40th, 50th, 60th, 80th, 90th, and 100th floors, each character receives their own set of rewards. Either you'll get a new horse, new outfit, or new equipable item that might be specific to that character. Every 20 floors, you will unlock the abilities you start on that floor. This is probably the worst aspect of the Endless Eclipse. Though you can save your progress every 5
25 floors, you can't start playing anything else until you have finished or reached 20 floors. Once you reach the 100th floor, you don't get the ability to start from there. Or at least I don't think you do, judging by the rewards. You just get a new outfit for most characters. I still haven't gotten to the 100th floor with anyone yet. I've gotten pretty close with Guts, but it gets really hard as you continue. Every character has their own progression. So if you make it to floor 20 with one, that doesn't mean you can start there with somebody else. So if you want to go for full completion of the game, you're going to need to go through at least eight hundred floors, but you won't be able to complete everything with just eight playthroughs. There is a wide variety of stages and requests per floor. You'll need to replay sections in order to unlock them all and get all the ballots. Yes, there are ballots in the Endless Eclipse. The main difference is that you won't be expected to do a certain task. Instead, you'll need to find warrior demons hidden within the stage. I say hidden, but they're usually shown to you as ripples on the map. Some requests can only be found by certain characters, so you are required to play through every character's endless eclipse, likely multiple times before you reach 100% completion. Yes, there is a lot to do in this game, and I feel like I've only gotten about halfway there. And living on a prayer. Con! And now it's my favorite time of a full pros versus cons review. The last section was all the little compliments I had that didn't fit nicely into one pro. Well, it's time for the opposite. It's nitpicking time, and I don't mean to brag, but I feel like it's a hidden talent of mine. I will pick nits that most people will miss. Now, enough tooting my own horn. Let's talk about the 2016 and 17 anime. A lot of people hated this to the point where we didn't even get a 2018, 19, 20, or word on a 21 anime. I know that we're still waiting on more chapters, but the reception makes me really think that we're not going to get a sequel, which is incredibly disappointing. I feel like they could have dived further into the story and provide us with more characters to play as. When Ken's Rage got a sequel, they ended up going from 8 characters to 27. Could you imagine if Berserk got a sequel and we got 19 more characters? That would be awesome and to get a little bit of a graphical boost if they release it on current generation. But we will never see this, and I blame the 2016 and 17 anime. Speaking of the animes, this game's story has scenes from the Golden Age movies in them. They take place of the cutscenes we would normally have. That being said, we still get in-game rendered cutscenes, and I honestly don't like this. The contrast between the two visual styles can be off-putting at times. With Arslan, the cel-shaded gameplay matched well enough with the anime cutscenes. But with this, it just looks so awesome. Off. It would have been better to have all of the cutscenes done in the in-game models. I'm not going to suggest that they match the game's visuals to the anime movies because I feel like that would look much worse. Can I also mention that it's weird how some stages are literally just one-on-one -on -one fights. Like the battle with Guts and Griffith is just one stage. I feel like a good chunk of these one-on-one -on -one battles would be much better to have at the end or the start of a full stage. Like I feel like if you're replaying stages through free mode, these stages will either be an annoyance or they will get skipped entirely depending on what you want. I personally never replayed these stages in Freemo because I already had the bailouts from them. So I just never re-experienced those parts of the story. And although I'm cool with that, I think it would be much better to have them as part of the end of a stage or before it. I also have to complain about the DLC. Why would you put DLC into this game if you're just gonna half-ass it? Similar to Arslan, we only get a couple of costumes and stages. The odd costumes we get don't really add much. We do get a couple outfits for characters like Guts, Griffith, Casca and Shirk, but there are characters that are just left out. Why didn't we get anything for Judo, Zod, or Wild? I haven't downloaded the stages personally because usually they're just a disappointment, and I don't really feel like playing them until I've completed everything else, and I just need to level up my characters. There is so much they could have done. Like, give us DLC characters that would have added to the story, and giving them a few stages in the packs to give us more reason to play as those DLC characters. It would have been cool to see some Musou crossover content, like a Lubu-style costume for Guts, or a Sun Sheng Sheng outfit fit for Casca. I don't know why they don't do this stuff more often. It's a rare sight that I want to see. Then there's the pre-order DLC for Guts and Griffith. This gives both a gold outfit and a white for Guts and a black for Griffith. What's sad about this is just how obvious the color palette swap is, especially with Griffith. The feathers that fly out when you attack are still white. Just a little level of detail that could have added to the costumes. But they didn't do that little bit of work. The last thing that I'll mention is how Berserk and the Band of the Hawk doesn't have any multiplayer. Not at all. It is a single player experience only. How the f***? 
Why would you do that? We don't get many single player Warriors games. And when we do, it's incredibly disappointing. I would love to play this game with my friends. I even had a friend express interest because they enjoyed Berserk and they wanted to know what this game was like. Unfortunately, we couldn't play together. Sure, I could let him play a couple of stages of the story by himself, but when somebody is already knowledgeable about the IP, it can be good to just let them jump into a random stage with their favorite character and experience the gameplay before experiencing the story. Having two-player co-op is something we've all come to expect from Warriors games, and when they don't have that feature, it is one of the biggest disappointments it can have. In the end, Berserk and the Band of the Hawk gave me a feeling of nostalgia I haven't felt in a while. Like I said, when I was first playing this game, I felt like I was playing a classic Warriors game for the first time again. Almost like I finally had a remaster of Dynasty Warriors 4. Almost, but not quite. There's still quite a few gripes that I have with this game, like the fact that we only have 8 playable characters. There's no dub, even though we had a cast lined up with the movies. Thanks to the 2016 and 17 anime, we will likely never see a sequel unless they make a brand brand new series. Also, the lack of really worthwhile DLC. But then you have all the pros I mentioned. The gameplay is incredibly solid. The story is so well followed. The game looks incredible. And of course, there's the replayability. There's still so much that I have left to do and things that I have to unlock in the Endless Eclipse. With all the fun that I had and what I still have to do, I give Berserk and the Band of the Hawk a 7.5 out of 10. There are some minor gripes I have with the game, yes, but I love every moment of playing this game. I still go back and play this every now and then. There's so much for me to do, and I just absolutely love it all. Playing the Endless Eclipse is so great. I really wanted to work towards the 100th floor with everyone, collecting the bayonets and finding the various requests. One thing that would make my experience that much better is to be able to play through the stages and Endless Eclipse with a friend. Imagine if they actually put some effort into the DLC and added characters and a two-player mode. That would have helped this game possibly become one of the best Warriors games out there. It's still a fun time, but there are parts that just don't live up to the potential that Berserk has. Anyways, everybody, thank you so much for watching my review of Berserk and the Band of the Hawk. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe for more. Leave a comment with your thoughts on the game below, and let me know if you think we're actually going to get a new anime series, or even see the end of Berserk. If you'd like to help support this channel and what I do here, you can join the guild just like these awesome people that you're seeing on screen right now. You can join them at the end of every single video for just a dollar a month. There's other rewards and other tiers as well, so check out the links that you see on screen, and I will see you all down in the comments.